Ever since Disney created Disney Plus, they've maintained by quarter four of 2024, which is later this year, they will reach profitability with that platform. And so far, they've been kind of struggling along that line. But this last quarter, they have been reporting, I guess, some profits. If you kind of squint and look at it in a different way, we got this article from the Hollywood Reporter back then. It was talking about the alleged profitability of Disney Plus. The company reported its fiscal second quarter earnings earlier Tuesday morning, disclosing that it combined direct to consumer business of Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Lost only $18 million last quarter on revenues of $6.2 billion. And that when ESPN Plus is removed from the equation, the entertainment streaming business was actually profitable with revenues of $5.6 billion and a net profit of $47 million. Now, it's kind of funny that they have to bundle in Disney Plus and Hulu together because the claim was they were always going to make Disney Plus profitable, but now they say it's Disney Plus and Hulu. And that's kind of funny because prior to Disney actually acquiring full ownership of Hulu, the only two profitable uh, <laughs> streaming services were Hulu and Netflix. And basically Disney bought something that's profitable, slap that onto their platform and say, yep, see, we're profitable now. But now we're starting to get these leaks coming out from Disney Plus. Uh, it was thanks to a hacker, which it says in this article right here from that park place that they don't condone any illegal uh, behavior or happen to actually get these uh, files in an illegal manner. But they are shown to be legitimate files from Disney. And it's really not looking too good when you actually can look at some of the numbers that they're not just presenting to their shareholders. The headline from this article leaked. Disney Plus financial data reveals troubling statistics on revenues per subscriber. The Walt Disney Company has spent tremendous resources on building up the Disney Plus streaming platform into a flagship dissemination tool for nearly all of its media. It has sacrificed the Disney Channel for it, though it still remains as a Vistage offering on American cable plans. It has destroyed the secondary market of Blu-rays and DVDs so that Disney Plus gets all the goods. To a large extent, it has damaged the box office with customers often waiting until they can get it for free when it comes to streaming. In other words, Disney got all these profitable Fabergé eggs and decided to throw them in the Disney Plus basket, hoping that single entity will reach profitability for them. And they spent billions of dollars so far on just Disney Plus, not to mention all the original content that they're actually producing for it. And at best, according to their reporting, they've made $18 million or around 10% of the Acolytes production budget. So not very good, all things considered, because at that rate, it'll take decades before Disney Plus eventually pays itself off and is starting to make money, which is something that a lot of shareholders might not be willing to wait for. But if you actually go by some of these hacked documents that we're getting out of Disney, then it's looking like they might not even been reaching profitability at all, or at least what they're doing right now is not going to be sustainable for them in the long term. While some of the acquired data is provided in a ho-hum way by various news outlets, a further investigation into what is really being provided shows that Bob Iger's Disney Plus strategy may be a real albatross for the company. According to the documents, Disney Plus generated more than $2.4 billion in revenue in the quarter, which ended in March, or 43% of the revenue generated by the company's direct-to-consumer business, which includes Hulu and ESPN. The article kind of questions the idea about including ESPN Plus within that figure too, because like I showed you at the start of the video, sometimes Disney will include ESPN Plus, other times they don't in order to try to make the numbers look better for the Disney Plus platform. But if it is included within it, that means they've only generated $2.4 billion for the three of these platforms, which is pretty bad for them, all things considered. But if it's not included, then that means it's actually bad news for Disney Plus, and here's why. Uh, according to Statista, they actually got the number of Disney Plus subscribers globally, which they have it listed here as 153.8 million accounts, and then you just divide that by the $2.4 billion in reported revenue, then that equates to around $15.63 per account per month uh, that they're generating from Disney Plus, or if you actually divide that by... Uh, three because there's three months in each individual quarter. That means each quarter Disney Plus is generating $5.21 per subscriber, which is actually pretty low figures, especially when you consider the lowest tier for a Disney Plus plan is $7.99. And this is also the ad supported tier. So you would think that they would actually be generating money from that uh, ads, but apparently they're not getting a whole lot from them. 
This indicates that globally, Disney is taking in minuscule numbers in order to drag that revenue total down to such a degree. The alternative is that perhaps Disney is generating far less money than even the lowest subscription plan costs because many of those accounts are perhaps tied into promotions and third-party sharing. And that, of course, is talking about Verizon and Charter TV subscribers because there are certain packages involved with those that include a Disney Plus subscription. So it's possible that those are actually being included in the global total of Disney Plus subscribers, even though they're not actually paying for it. And I'm thinking that's probably the case because Disney will definitely tout those numbers of those subscribers through those different platforms as Disney Plus subscribers during their earnings reports in order to try to bolster the numbers. So it's looking like that's probably going to be the case too. So in actuality, the revenue they're generating per actual paid Disney Plus subscriber, like people who just subscribe to Disney Plus or maybe like a package deal of Disney Plus, like with Hulu and ESPN Plus or something like that, it's probably much lower than the $5.21 that they're actually getting from this article right here. Uh, The breach data is allegedly revenues. It isn't profit. That's also important to point out. While Disney may be scraping by with profitable quarters for streaming in their most recent earnings call, if Disney Plus is generating $2.4 billion in revenue across an entire quarter, it's not obvious how Disney can increase the churn of new content without overspending dramatically. And that's really the big kicker to all this, and it's ultimately up to the shareholders what they're willing to accept, because I think Disney might have shot themselves in the foot by reporting profitability on Disney Plus. Because now in the next quarter, if they go back to them and say that we've lost money on Disney Plus, they're going to kind of be like, well, what gives? You said that you're making money on Disney Plus, so why are you actually losing money now? Of course, last quarter, there really wasn't producing anything original for it. So that's probably why they're able to shave off some of the expenses. But if they're willing to actually try to just maintain the Disney Plus how it is with no new content, eventually it'll stagnate. So they need to produce new stuff. And if they try to produce new stuff, they're not generating enough revenue per subscriber in order to actually do that without going back into the red. So I think the only other way that they can actually maintain profitability while also producing new content is doing what they've been doing, which is to try to hike the prices for their different uh, tiers of Disney Plus. But ultimately, this is a short-sighted solution too, because some people, I think Disney is betting will probably drop off, but they're hoping that most people will probably stay to the platform. So the revenue that they're losing from people dropping off is not going to be greater than the amount that they're going to be gaining through hiking the prices. But this is a short-sighted solution because eventually if you continue along this line, you're going to have more people dropping off than staying. And the revenue that you're actually gaining by increasing the prices is not going to be greater than the revenue that you're losing from people leaving your platform. So I think the only solution Disney can actually do in order to try to correct this ship is basically producing good content that makes people want to subscribe to Disney plus for, but I'm just not confident that they're going to be able to do that because just looking at some of the stuff that they're producing recently, uh, the acolyte was a colossal failure for them. Agatha is coming out and that looks like it's going to be another bomb for them. So uh, I'm not confident that the leadership at Disney right now in their various studios is able to actually produce content that will actually drive subscribers to the Disney plus platform right now. So maybe Disney is just going to continue to throw money at this and hope that they can eventually make it work. But right now uh, with the way things are currently going, Disney plus is basically just a sinking ship, but let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Do you think this is just kind of normal business stuff for them and they're eventually going to reach profitability with it and it's actually going to make money for Disney? Or do you think this is just kind of a losing thing and they're just holding on to it because it was Bob Iger's, uh, I don't know, vanity project comment below. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button. If you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news and don't forget to click that like button and share this video out there because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.